That happened. But before we get to that... Oh, hey guys. Welcome to RV Woodworks. My name is Raheem. In today's era, with cell phones and screen time being so prominent in our lives, I find woodworking, and more specifically hand planing, to be that therapeutic and kind of change in pace from the grind of the busy day. And oh yeah, I broke my finger. It's not what you think. I'll tell you more about it later. But the most frustrating thing for me during the hand planing process is holding down work materials. Now, there's all kinds of vices, vices available, but I'm not blessed to have a huge work working shop. And therefore, I don't have space to have a dedicated workbench. And that's okay because I figured out a modular workbench solution that really works for me. Adding a vise to this workbench is not really an option because it removes the equilibrium required to create a small gap in my workbench so I can use it for my track saw. When Weaver reached out to me and gave me the opportunity to review their one third horsepower rotary vacuum pump, I saw an opportunity to build something unique that would solve all my problems and maybe some of yours as well. But before we get started, I want to mention that Weaver did send me this pump. But the opinions of this video are of my own and they have no influence in what I say. At any rate, let's get this build started. Okay guys, let's kick this off with a simple unboxing. Let's see what we get in the box. We have this box and we have the vacuum pump. So we got these two items here. If I open up this one, this particular package that they have sent me is for air conditioning, vacuuming, something or another. I'm sure you guys could tell me in the video comments below, but I have no use for this. If you actually live in a greater Toronto area and you're interested in this, please stop by anytime and pick it up for free. At any rate, Weaver sends multiple variations where they have different accessories that go with the vacuum pump that you can purchase. Therefore, this particular version came with this, but there's others that come with other things or you can just get the vacuum pump as well. Now, let's get into the meat of the conversation. Let's open up this bad boy and see what we get. A user manual. We'll look at what's in there in a minute. Oh, interesting. This is actually very good. Usually you don't get vacuum pump oils, but they've given you two bottles. It's fantastic. And here is our vacuum pump itself. Well protected in some oil. All right. Let's get rid of that plastic. All right, here's the model information that's on a piece of metal here with a serial number. Very heavy duty, looks like. Fairly strong. All right, we'll bring you back up top and we'll talk about it further. First of all, this power cable is four and a half feet or about 1.37 meters. Uh, we have two exits valves here on this one and they're obviously NPT threads. Now, seeing that there's two valves, I want to kind of highlight that this is one third horsepower, 4.8 CFM. The different models that Beaver has would have different outlets as well. So on off switch back here uh, alongside an exhaust fan. We flip it over to the other side, we see the uh, exhaust cap, which needs to be removed before operating, obviously. And here in this window, you can see how much oil it has, which right now there's none. And to fill that, there's a red colored cap here that we'll remove. And we'll fill that with the provided oil. All right, with that oil in, we'll get this cap back on. We will remove the exhaust cover and let's fire up. I have to say, this is more quiet than I thought it was gonna be. Okay guys, with the machine tested, with it all working well, next step is to create the connections required to have a vacuum pump jig. Now, I'm gonna walk you through this entire process. There's nothing difficult here. You just have to purchase these items on Amazon. All the links are in the video description below. Everything except this particular one right here, the adapt mail to mail adapter, is the only one that I bought at Home Depot but I'll look for it on Amazon. If I find it, you'll find it in the video description below. If not, then you will see it. I'm a, um, a link to the Home Depot website as well. So we'll connect that here. This already has the taping in it as well, but, uh, but I have it here just in case I want to use it. And this will connect here. So we'll take a 16 millimeter and we'll tighten this thing down. 
you don't have to go crazy tight on this. You just need to make sure it's tight enough where now there's no air leaking. We'll go ahead and use a 14 millimeter here to get the quick connector installed. And just for sanity's sake, I'm just going to turn this on and ensure that there's no leaks happening anywhere. Make sure you remove the exhaust cover. Next, we will put aside the vacuum pump and work on the manifold by adding inline valves so that we can control the individual intakes. And on the ends, we'll connect the main connector that's coming from the vacuum pump itself. And on the other end, we'll add a gauge so that we're able to monitor the current pressure. Yes, yes, there's irony here. I'm using a vise to somewhat create a vise. But that's not the only way. I just couldn't really hang on to the manifold because of my broken finger. Speaking of which, the broken finger is not a woodworking mishap. Thank goodness, it's actually from soccer. Now you would wonder why would I break a finger playing soccer? Well, actually, I'm not out in the field, rather I'm a goalie for a local team in my neighborhood. And for some reason, they play like they're playing in the World Cup. This particular shot that I was trying to stop was honestly too hard and I should have punched it away instead of trying to catch it. I guess lesson learned the hard way. Any case, this is what the manifold looks like. With the vacuum pump and the manifold complete, it was time to pay attention to the actual clamp itself, which was 3D printed. And I'll put the link in the video description below where you can get this. Now this particular 3D printing didn't already have the threads added and so I got busy putting the threads in. This threading kit is also available on Amazon and it has repaid itself multiple times over. And with the threading complete, we added the connector required to get a push to fit connection. And be careful, do not over tighten here, the plastic will break. I'll be honest with you, this was not my first try. And a little CA glue with activator for a little extra security. And to finish up this project, the last thing I needed was to add some rubber clock. It's actually concrete expansion joint filler, but it's perfect for this. Next, we'll give it a try to see how well this works. With that success, I'm going to go ahead and modify my workbench to accept these pods. This will be done with threaded inserts and I'm going to put four connections. Now depending on the length of the board that I want to plane or hold down, I can use any one of these two combinations of threaded inserts to put in the pods. That was oddly satisfying and immediately I turned to my 3D printer to print a bunch more that I can hook up to my CNC. And with all connected, this was my first try printing something. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, so as you can see, I was able to set up a good work holding station on my workbench, modular so that I can set it up in multiple spots depending on the length of the wood that I'm trying to plane. I've also set it up 
with multiple pods on my work CNC and it does a phenomenal job as you saw holding the workpiece down so that the CNC can do its thing and it makes it a lot easier and I don't need any clamps to hold the workpiece down. What's really interesting about this um, vacuum pump is that it is easy to set up, it is it holds the workpiece down phenomenally but there's one small thing that you need to be mindful of when purchasing this. It does release a level of mist into the air because of the oil. When, when the suction occurs, the oil mist that comes into the air does tend to come up a lot. And I found a relatively cheap solution by taking a pipe and putting it up so that it goes out the window and therefore there's no smoke in my shop. But I want you to be aware of that because my opinion is my own opinion and I want to be honest with you when I share that. I do have a, a promo code for Weaver and Interestingly enough, as I was making this video, I received an email from Onefinity that has started a new partnership with Airweights. And when you look at that system, it's great, but guess what? It's in the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, whereas this is relatively cheap to set up. And if you use my promo code, RV Woodworks on their website, you'll get an additional 5% discount if you purchase. Check the video description below for the links to all the different pieces that I got. They're all numbered and easy for you to grab, and you can get this thing set up for yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the workbench, click here and you'll be able to see how I built that. If you wanna see how I made my own track saw, click here and guess what? YouTube thinks you'll like this video the best. And if nothing else, give me a high five by subscribing to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again.